place, Hakka Chin State. And she is around us, and we invited her with her husband. They happily come here to celebrate with us. Please say something. Kaminzu Martha Martins Asi. Siangboypa Robert Johnson, Le Siangboy New Elizabeth Johnson, Fanu Yang Big Mikasi. Kamet Liawa, Laiho Katianko. A Sinayan Atuzu, a Tom Pikapiltong. Sita Mirang Hol in Katsima to Natadio Lai. Now, for those of you wondering who this white lady wearing chin clothes is, I'm Martha Martins, the youngest daughter of Robert and Elizabeth Johnson, who were the last Baptist missionaries to the Chin Hills. So when I was young, I spoke Chin very well, but I left Burma when I was 12 years old, so I have forgotten a lot of my Chin. So I will speak in English because I had the vocabulary of a child, and sadly, I have forgotten a lot of that. It's an honor to represent my family at this joyous occasion of the Silver Jubilee of Chin Baptist Church, and also as you celebrate the birthday of Reverend Sum Oi and his many years of, of service as a minister of the gospel. My father died in 2009, and my mother died in 2017. But my brother Richard and my sister Ruth Kristen send their greetings and good wishes to you. So I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I grew up in Hakka, and I spoke only Chin until I was four years old. And I wouldn't have learned it then, except I wanted to go to school. And my mother was homeschooling us, and she said, Martha, if you want to go to school, you have to learn English. So I learned English for school, and they also asked us to speak English at the dinner table. But the rest of the time, the whole family spoke only Chin. Now, when I was about three, I was very small, and I couldn't see myself in the mirror. And one time, when I finally saw myself in the mirror, I was astonished to discover that I had blonde hair and white skin. <laughs> I had always thought I was Chin, and I was not at all happy to find out that I was white. We all loved living in Hakka. We had good friends there, and there was always something fun to do. I remember that Christmas was such a special time. After the church service, there was always a big feast out in the yard in front of the old church, and in the afternoon, there were lots of games for the children to play. I remember one particularly where the boys would sit on a, on a pole, sort of, and hit each other with pillows to knock each other off. <laughs> The, the old church, I don't know how many of you are from Hakka, but the old church was two stories, and the sanctuary was in the second story, with Sunday school on the first story. And on Christmas Eve, there was always a candlelight service. And at the end of the service, everybody came out of the church carrying their candles, and they would come down this big, wide staircase. And if you were away and you looked back, it was just like a stream of light coming out of the church, just like Jesus is the light of the world. When I was 12, my parents sent me to boarding school in India, the same school that my brother and sister had attended. When I had been there for one year, I was going home for Christmas, expecting to go home to Hakka. But the Burmese government refused my visa, even though I was only 12 years old. My mother had been quite sick, so the doctor said she needed to go to the States for medical treatment. So instead of going home, as we all expected, my mother and I just had to go to America. And shortly after that, the Burmese government expelled all the missionaries. And my father also had to leave Burma. And we were never able to go back to live. It was really hard for me to leave Burma so unexpectedly. Being a young teenager is hard anyway. And when you have to go to a new country and a new school when you don't want to, it's really hard. I'm sure many of you understand what it's like to leave a place that you love. 
and go to a place where the people and the culture are so very different. But in time, I adjusted. I went to high school and college, and I met Michael Martins. We got married and became Bible translators in Indonesia. And I'll ask him to come up in just a little bit to tell you about that. I have more to say. We have two sons. They're, they're both married and have four children each. So we have eight grandchildren. Our older son, Kenny, and his family live in Grand Prairie, Texas. And our younger son, Stephen, and his family have been in Thailand for 13 years teaching in a Christian international school. And this summer, they are moving to Malaysia to teach at another school. We're thankful that our sons are committed Christians and are teaching their children to love the Lord. My brother Richard, who was known in Hakka as Deki, is retired from the U.S. Army. He and his wife live in Maryland. They have three children and four grandchildren. And my sister Ruth Kristen, who was called Ruti, was a neonatal nurse in California. And she and her husband moved to Georgia after they retired. They had two children, but no grandchildren yet. Now I'll let Michael say a few words, and after that I have just a little concluding statement. <laughs> 